Okay, dual capture is something we have not spoken about at all. I'll show you where it's at on the DL850. Press Shift and then the Acquire button, which is right under the Start Stop button. You'll see right under the Acquire button it says Dual Capture. So first I want you to understand uh, why dual capture is useful. In general, here's what it does. You've got in your main window uh, a slow data rate. So you're looking at this, and you may be sampling at 100 kilosamples per second. We set up a trigger, and as soon as that trigger condition is met, uh, we will actually then sample at a, a, a much faster sample rate. And then this waveform gets saved into a different place in your binary file. So when you open up a dual capture waveform in XViewer, it will have all of these events and, and, and also in this, this list here. Right here I have a list. I could have a, I could have a thousand events or 5,000 events, each saved as a separate acquisition because each of those events met a criteria such as a surge. And that really is all dual capture is. It captures simultaneously at a slow uh, speed. And then when it has events, it samples at a much higher rate. So here's what dual capture looks. Every time my trigger condition is met, I get up in this upper waveform area, I get tick marks. And that is an event. That may mean a surge. And for each tick mark, there's one acquisition. So if I have 10 tick marks, I may have 10, 10 of these acquisitions here. So it would be 10 events. I may have, at that time, I would have a total of 11 waveforms because I've got one waveform up here, the main waveform, and then I've got 10 more down here, the total of 11 events. And they're all in one file. So it's pretty powerful. And dual capture also works with action. That means when I get an event, I can save the data. I can save that waveform. So in that case, that makes the DL850 more automatic for you. And it can work in your absence. You can go home for the weekend, and the DL850 can for look, look for a surge or a sag and record those uh, events. You also get an event list, and you have one microsecond time stamp on each event. So in this case, an event would be some kind of distortion, like I have over here. And uh, that's a separate acquisition there. So where do the waveforms go? This is XViewer. This is the software that I told you about earlier. And if you do not have it, please let me send you a free copy of it, uh, which runs in trial mode. And you have a permanent license to trial mode. You can put it on any computer. And it will always let you see your waveform. So in the main screen of XViewer, I have, I have this uh, main acquisition. And then for each event, each surge, I have another window. I can click on that window and look at it in the big window. Then I can zoom on it. This is very powerful. So I've given you an exercise here of how to perform a dual capture. Uh, <clears throat> I would encourage you to do this. This 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 is this uses one probe, uh, so one channel. Um, this can be kind of a tricky exercise to do. Uh, but I'll do it on the screen here on the camera. So first of all, let's all go back and do exercise one, this first part right here. So exercise one, I'm going to do it for you together on the screen. I'm going to press, uh, so, I, so I have the, uh, the probe here connected to the compensation signal. Um, I'm going to hit setup, which is this button here. Go ahead and hit setup, everyone. And... Uh, Let's press Auto Setup. Okay, so I've got 
about two cycles. Okay, yeah. so let's let's all attempt dual capture. Um, in this case, okay. So at this time, disconnect your probe from the probe compensation waveform, and you'll just have it free like this. Okay, press uh, stop. So I'm in stop mode now. Let's see, let me have an action. Turn that off. Okay, I'm going to press uh, record length. I'm going to set it for 100K. Press acquire and record length 100K. Press trigger mode and select normal. Trigger mode normal. Um, press uh, so mode normal. Okay, and then press simple enhanced. And in this case, set the level for about 500 millivolts on channel one. Now adjust this knob, time per division, for one second per division. We have one second per division. Okay, my finger's on the shift button. Press shift, then press dual capture, which is up here. It's a sub-function of the acquire button right here under start stop. Soft menu button number one is mode, on. That turns on dual capture. Okay, so we now have a main window at the top and the dual capture window at the bottom. Okay, soft menu button number two is capture setup. Press it. Okay, for the time per division there, adjust that to 20 milliseconds per division. That's this time per division here. So you're not going to use this knob. You're going to use the big knob. Actually use set. Yeah. So just to be very clear, it says 20 milliseconds per division here where my finger is under wow. capture setup window. And it says one second per division in the main window. Yeah. Okay, so capture length. Um, set it for 500K. Okay, I'm going to review my settings here very quickly. My time per division in the capture setup window here is 20 milliseconds per division. My capture length is 500K. That's how many points? 500,000 points. Capture okay. mode is auto. And then up, I'm, going to, I'm not going to choose an action, but this could be saved to file as an example. Up here I have 10K samples per second. And I've got one second per division in the main window. You can just make sure there's no check mark on action for now. That would save it to file, which is which is very powerful actually. But if you don't have a USB thumb drive or other media installed, it'll give you an error message. So there's no check mark on action. So once we feel good about these settings here and here, press the escape button here on my fingertip, just one time, and then go over to start stop and press start. And nothing, nothing happens at this time, but I've got a 10-second nice slow acquisition here. There's nothing on my probe. There's no noise. But now when I expose the tip here, I can pull this tip off, right? And I can touch it, and I create a capture. I hope you guys can see that on the video. I'm going to hit it about six times. Make sure you're getting the same reaction as my instrument, instrument here, the same response. Okay. At my fingertip here, I have an uh, acquisition count. I have 57 events. If you look at your display where my finger is now, you'll see an event counter there. Everyone press stop. Okay, so soft menu button number four says list. Go ahead and press list. However many events you've got in there, I don't know if you can see my screen, but I've got 80 Seven. So it's a total of 88 events, 0 through 87. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 87. So each of those events would be viewable at high sample rates within XViewer. The idea is with dual capture, you're going to have, when you open this file as a binary file, you're going to have these events listed in uh, XViewer as, as separate entities, you'll be able to examine those separately and at very high sample rates.
I hope I've impressed upon you the power of it and the result that you can get with it, okay? Um, so once you do get a dual capture, or for that matter, any acquisition, the screen that I have up there now is XViewer software. Basically, XViewer does uh, just three things. One is it lets you view your waveforms like I showed you in a prior screen. So that's the screen here. This is what the XViewer window looks like. And this, this window here at the bottom where my mark is, that's a zoom window. You can turn that off or turn it on, whichever you want. Here is an XY window. Um, I don't have too many customers that use the XY window. Here's the dual capture, DC dual capture window. Those are your dual capture events there. And then this, this window here, this is the main window. So I can put each of these events in there and look at them separately. I can enable them simultaneously and look at them overlaid with one another, things like that. So this is a, a successful dual capture test that I ran earlier. The top window is the main window. And each of these is an event. One of these events is set to a shorter time base and displayed down here at the bottom. So again, this is dual capture. OK, so the number one function of XViewer is to view your waveforms. The number two function is to connect and actually open the DL and do data transfer. So that's actually very handy. These days we all have USB thumb drive, and this is pretty convenient. Um, a third function is remote control. And remote control can be pretty nice. If you have a way to dial in from home, you can watch a test, or you can dial into it from your office. If you can find a way to do uh, wireless Ethernet, uh, the, 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 the function is built in to the DL850. You can access it via USB cable or Ethernet. So that's XViewer. It also does parametric, such as peak-to-peak, -peak, which is what I've got here. Uh, there's channel 1. Got a peak-to-peak -peak measurement right there. And then every other parameter that you can think of. So you can look at your waveform later. If you forgot to measure it when you had it on the scope, you can do this as post-analysis. You can also get screenshots and use those for reports. OK. So again, you can zoom. You've got cursors in the XViewer software. You've got the parametric or the parameters. And you've also got 32 channels of math, 32 channels. So this is post-analysis. And XViewer gets better every year. The upgrades are free. So if you want to make sure you have the latest version now for your DL850, and this is very important, make sure that you get your firmware updated and also get your XViewer updated to the very latest versions. So you heard me talking about ASCII files earlier. So this is a CSV file on the DL850, and it's called an ASCII file uh, in, in, in the data world. I would discourage it, but if you wanted to do ASCII, and sometimes it's very important that you do, do it with XViewer because it's free and it's easy and it's faster and your files are going to be very large. So it's important to do that on your PC. Okay. If you need to reduce your data, this is one way to do it. If I had, you know, a three-day recording across this acquisition, but I wanted to set a cursor across three minutes, well, I can choose File, and then Save As, and then More Options, and set the data range simply as the cursor. So I can also, I can also save Zoom only or Cursor only. So this is just one way of reducing your data. OK, I showed you this screen earlier, and uh, I really want to make sure you get the latest firmware. And we do about three firmware upgrades a year. And that often is adding new features. OK, so here's a button. If you need to walk away from a long-term recording, hit this button right here. And you can actually put a password on it. And what this does is no one will accidentally hit your recorder and mess it up. So this is just a safety feature. 
it's not Fort Knox. You can you can override this by doing a factory reset. And uh in this case uh in case you forget your password, you can do a factory reset and get back to uh the the the, the virgin state of the machine. But this is just a convenience button so that you can uh make sure that no one accidentally uh disrupts your recording. So uh the scope quarter is a uh, a Swiss Army knife. As a result, um it will probably do something, anything you can think of, anything you can think up. And uh sometimes you may need, you know, help to uh to get through a test and that's what I'm for. I keep a DL eight fifty at my desk every day. Uh just email me or call me and I can answer just about any question. We can push buttons together over the scope as well.